So in today's video, I'm going to be previewing Bradford City versus Crawley Town. And then in the second part of today's video, I'm going to bring in you guys my Game Week 26 League 2 score predictions. If you do go on to enjoy, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could try to 80 likes on today's video, that'd be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you're new as well. We are on the road to 8,000 subscribers. So please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on. It's free to do so and it does massively help out. Get your thoughts in as well down in the comment section down below. Let me know down below your score prediction for this match. What would your style 11 be as well? Would you make any changes from New Year's Day's 1-0 defeat away at Crew Alexandra? We are without a win now in our last three matches. Since Jamie Walker has picked up that injury, we are yet to win a match. So he has been a big miss for us. He's going to miss this game as well. We need to get one over Crawley because we played them on the opening day on my birthday. We lost 1-0. It was an absolutely horrible performance. So fingers crossed we can get the job done against them in this match. But make sure to drop a like on there for me. Subscribe if you're new as well. And let's get into it. Starting out then with the current Skybet League 2 table, my team Bradford City, we currently sit 13th in the table. After 25 matches, we've got 9 wins, 7 draws and 9 defeats, scoring 31 goals and also conceding 31, which leaves us on a 0 goal difference and 34 points. Our last couple of matches then have been a loss, a draw, a draw, a win and a win. Our most recent match being the end of our 8 game, I think it was, unbeaten run. Then last couple of matches that then been a 1-0 defeat away at Crew Alexandra, a 0-0 draw at home to Stockport County. A 2-2 draw at home to Morecambe FC, a 3-1 win away at Doncaster Rovers and a 2-0 win away at Gillingham. If we compare that then to Crawley Town, they currently sit 12th in the Skybet League 2 table. After 25 matches, they've got 11 wins, just the 3 draws and 11 defeats. 39 goals scored and 42 goals conceded, which leaves them on a minus 3 goal difference and 36 points. Their last couple of matches then have been a win, a loss, a win, a loss and a loss. So very inconsistent and you can see why they are currently smack bang in the middle of the table. Then my last couple of matches at them being a 3-1 win at home to Swindon Town. Obviously, Jake Young did play in that game for Swindon. That was his last match for the club and he will be coming up against Crawley once more in this one for Bradford City. They also had a 2-0 defeat away at MK Dons. Lawrence Maguire getting sent off in that one for Crawley so he might potentially be banned for this one. I'm not too sure the extent of that red card. They also had a 2-0 win away at Gillingham. A 2-1 defeat at home to AFC Wimbledon who did get a red card in that match and a 3-1 win, uh, sorry, a 3-1 defeat at home at two-man Field Town, Crawley picking up another red card in that one. So the discipline recently in Crawley's last five matches, three red cards in them games, two for Crawley, one for the opposition, is certainly not ideal. But now we're going to get into the team that I would go with if I was Graham Alexander. Now I think a lot of people probably who watched that game against Crew Alexandra would say it was not a particularly pretty game of football. It was a lot of long ball. The formation didn't really work on their small pitch, but I have stuck with the 3-1 at 4-2. In goal, I've gone with Harry Lewis. I'm pretty sure I didn't actually have a save to make against Crew. Obviously, there was the penalty, but you can't really blame a keeper for a penalty. If they save it, it's brilliant. If they don't, then there's not really too much you can do about it. I think for me personally, it probably was a penalty, but Lewis didn't really have much to do against Crew, so I don't see any reason why you would consider dropping him. Into the back three then, on the right side, I've gone with Jonathan Tomkinson. I thought personally it was probably his worst performance in a Bradford City shirt so far and I don't even think he was that bad to be honest with you he's just been brilliant in all of the other games that he has played obviously he gives away the penalty I'm not too sure if it's a foul he potentially needs to make but at the end of the day he didn't even get booked for it there's have been a lot of crew fans saying it should have been a red card. For me personally, I think there is clearly intention to play the ball. I think a lot of the crew fans don't really understand the rules for some reason. But Tomkinson, I think it would have been very harsh if he was sent off for that, especially when it's not like it was an open goal for long. He still had the keeper to beat, who was, you know, obviously very close to him at that point. In the centre, I've stuck with Matty Platt. I thought he was one of our better players against crew, to be honest with you. I thought he dealt with Baker Richardson very well, in my opinion, and didn't really have too much to do in the game. Obviously, his distribution isn't the greatest, but as a central centre, I certainly don't think he's a bad option at four League 2 level. And at left centre-back, I've gone with Kieron Kelly. I thought he started out the game very good against Crew. As more time went on, I think they were using their experience better and getting past him a couple of times. But I thought overall for me, he had a really, really strong game. And for me personally, he deserves to stay in this side. Into the two wing-backs then. At right wing-back, I've gone with Brad Halliday. Now, for me personally, I thought he was actually one of his worst performances that he's put in as of recent against Crew. I thought he was quite poor, to be honest with you. I don't think there were many players who came away from that game with much 
credit. But Halliday has been probably our player of the season so far. He's been so consistent. He's been brilliant. So I think if you were to drop him after that, when you've not got another right wing back available, I think that would be very harsh. So for me personally, Halliday does definitely deserve to stay in the side despite what was a pretty poor game against Crew, to be honest. And at left wing back, it's something which may be slightly controversial. I've gone with Bobby Poynton. He obviously came on and played in this position for the last 15 minutes, plus added time against Crew. But with Lewis Richards probably still out with injury, Liam Rydell showing that he's nowhere near the standard, why not give Bobby Poynton a go in that role? He's basically going to be playing as a left winger throughout the game. And if we need to defend, then Kelly can come and play at left back and give him the cover there. And I think we'd be more than confident and more than competent in doing that, in my opinion. Now, while it is definitely a square peg in a round hole, I can't watch Liam Rydell try and attempt to play football anymore. He's absolutely terrible. Some of the crosses he was putting into the box against Crew were abysmal. And for me personally, he's just nowhere near good enough. He needs to move on in this January transfer window. It's our number one priority in terms of position that we need to improve. We need to get a new first choice left wing back in there. I don't think Richards is bad at for this level, but he's quite injury prone. And I think we just need another option in there. So for now, I've gone with Bobby Poynton. I think we need to get him into this team because he's got a lot of creative flair and he could certainly provide a threat on that left, side, left hand side. Defensively, he might get caught out a little bit, but when you're at home, why not? give something else a little bit of a go, especially after how poor we were against Crew Into the midfield then, as the holding midfielder, I've gone with Richie Smallwood. Now, I thought his general play against Crew wasn't awful. You know, he was trying to slow the game down at times when a lot of the players were just booming it up to our strikers and it wasn't really working, but he set pieces particularly his corners were really really poor and we saw what we saw last season in terms of the corners especially where they either didn't beat the first man or they were going straight out of play over everybody and out for a goal kick and it is definitely that something that Smallwood does need to work on if he is to be our set piece taker while Jamie Walker is currently out injured I don't think his free kicks are awful I think a lot of the time it's just because the opposition set up quite well but his corners especially have been really really underwhelming over the last couple of matches but I thought his general play in the game wasn't awful into the two number eights then at first I've gone with Alex Gilead I thought as more time and games went by in that Christmas period you could see he was getting more and more tired because he puts absolutely everything into every single match and it made sense really to bring him off against Crew because he was looking knackered and hopefully now after a little bit of an extended break for him he's going to be back fit and ready for this one against Crawley because before that in the previous matches that he's played since probably half time against Notts County I think he has been really really good in my opinion so definitely deserves to stay in this side and as a maybe more attacking at number eight, I've actually gone with Harry Chapman. Now, he's been someone who's pretty much been, not, I wouldn't say frozen out of the squad, but he's not been involved in the matchday squad for, I'd say, what, a month, six weeks, something like that now, which is really, really bizarre because Chapman clearly possesses a lot of quality and it looks like he might actually move on at this January transfer window. But this is my personal team that I would go with. Clark Adore has some bright moments, but defensively doesn't offer enough. He can look quite lazy at times. And I think sometimes he's just far too casual with his play. He's quite frustrated straighten as well to watch because he does so many fake shots and then by the time he actually gets his shot off he's then got another defender near him and he's just sometimes a little bit too hesitant for me if a door is to start I don't mind that as long as it's not Osadibe I don't really care but Chapman for me I think deserves an opportunity because as of right now it looks very likely that he will move on and I think this could be a, a good game for Harry Chapman to come in and prove his worth into the two strikers then at first I've gone with Andy Cook he hasn't particularly been great over the last couple of matches but he's not really had much service yes he did score against Crew, but it was very very clear that he was offside he was at least a yard maybe two yards offside at the end of the day so I don't really think he can have many complaints about that in terms of his overall play he's having so many headers and aerial duels to challenge for that eventually he's actually going to knacker him out because it's not easy to do when you've got two three defenders wrestling around you for 90 minutes constantly so I do think sometimes you might need to change it up a little bit but obviously he's our biggest goal threat at this moment in time so definitely deserves to stay in this team and lead the line for us once more and partnering him I have gone with Jay Kyung obviously he needs to play in this match so he can't then be sold or if he is sold then he's going to be at least loan back to one of us or Swindon Town. For me personally, I think he needs to come in and start. Tyler Smith of the last three matches has offered very, very little. His physicality or lack of physicality, should I say, is really hindering him, I think, at this moment in time in terms of Graham Alexander's system. Smith has only scored three league goals as well. While he scored, I think, 10 in all competitions, it is only three in the league and Jake Young has scored 16 in the league. He's picked up four assists as well. Throughout his time at Swindon Town, he's much taller, much more physical and I think he does provide a little bit more of a goal threat, in my opinion. I think more than likely 
Alexander will probably stick with Tyler Smith, but I think for me personally, Jake Young needs to come straight into this starting eleven. and obviously Matt Derbyshire doesn't really offer too much, and if you go Cook and Oliver, they're far too similar in my opinion. On the bench then for me, that'd leave Colin Doyle, Ash Taylor, Sam Stubbs, Kevin McDonald, Clark Adore, Tyler Smith, and Verde Oliver. The players who I think are currently unavailable are Daniel Yagoke, Lewis Richards, Alex Patterson, and Jamie Walker, which means the players who would miss out through selection then would be Harvey Rowe, Liam Rydaug, Emmanuel Sidibe, Adam Wilson, Rehan Tullock, and Matt Derbyshire. Now then let's get into my Game Week 26 League 2 score predictions. Now obviously it is the weekend of the FA Cup third round so there are two League 2 fixtures which have already been rearranged. There's I think a further four which have been postponed awaiting a rearranged date. So there is actually only six games for us to predict through and obviously the four that are postponed. Starting out then with the early kickoff between Harrogate Town and Doncaster Rovers. I'm going to back Doncaster for a 2-1 away win. I think after a brilliant 3-0 win at home to MK Dons I think they will back it up with another one and a beat Harrogate in my opinion AFC Wimbledon versus Grimsby Town has been postponed Barrow AFC versus Tramia Rovers obviously big blow for Tramia losing up to uh, Blackpool have obviously recalled him and I think Barrow will come away with the victory in this one at 3-1 Bradford TT versus Crawley Town Crawley don't draw many but I think this one will end in a draw I'm going 1-1 in that one Mansfield Town versus Crew Alexandra I'm going with a 3-1 home win for the Stags I've just realised there I've spelled Alexandra wrong apologies about that MK Dons versus Wrexham AFC has been postponed. Newport County versus Accrington Stanley has been postponed. Notts County versus Sutton United has also been postponed. And Salford City versus Forest Green Rovers, I actually think, finishes in a 2 1 away win for Troy Deeney's side. And finally, Swindon Town versus Colchester United. Colchester recently appointing the Cowleys as their new management duo. And obviously, Swindon losing both Dan Kemp and Jake Young. I think that one finishes in a 2 0 away win for Colchester. There's a couple teams who don't even feature on their Stockport, is certainly one of them. So I'm going to presume their game and one of the other League 2 fixtures has already be arra re been rearranged sorry, for a further date. But I'm going to leave it there then for today's video. If you have enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could channel 80 likes. As I said at the start of today's video, that would massively be appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are now on the road to 8,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed. If you haven't already, with that post notification bell on, it's free to do so and it does massively help out. Get your thoughts in as well down in the comment section down below. Let me know down below your score prediction for this match. What would your start 11 be as as well would you make any changes from new year's day defeat against crew alexandra thank you all very much for watching have a good rest of your day and i'll see you very soon for another one peace